Is this the best 22 rifle that's still in production today? Okay, the rifle that we have here is the Browning BL-22, grade one. There are three features that I have found that make this rifle stand apart from the competition. Number one, this is a steel receiver, not no pop metal right here, steel. Number two, this lever has a 33 degree throw, unlike your standard lever actions that have a 90 degree throw. Here we go. And number three, this rifle is just gorgeous. The fit and finish on this beauty is second to none in my personal opinion. You can tell by looking at this rifle how much craftsmanship has gone into it. There are some key differences between this one and previous lever action 22s that I've had. <laughs> and I'd like to go through the main ones today. First of all, this rifle is extremely light. Let's go through all the stats real quick before I say anything else. The site says it has a 20 inch long blued polished barrel. When I put my tape measure on it, I actually measured 19 and a half. As you can see, it sits at about 19 and a half if we're judging from right here, but it may be 20 and go the full way. The overall length is 36 and three quarters inches. The length of pull, which is from here to here, measures in at 13 and a half inches. And even for my long dangly arms, that's perfect. The twist rate is one and six or 16. The beautiful wood that you see right here on the forearm and the stock is made out of black walnut. As you can tell, it has a gloss finish. I wasn't always crazy about gloss finishes on wood, but I've come to really appreciate and see the beauty in that glossy finish that they put on their wood. That's the initial stats, but there's one more stat that's the most important to me personally. The weight on this rifle is at an even five pounds. Nani? Guys, you can't get much better than that. If you want a light, handy 22 in the woods, five pounds is, that. that's almost like you're carrying around a little stick. That is what I wanted when I initially got into lever action 22s, or just 22s in general. I wanted something really nice, short and handy that I could bring through the woods and go squirrel hunting with because I love hunting with 22 room fire rifles for squirrels, rabbits, any small game. I love the 22 the most. I know I'm also considered small game, but if you ever try to shoot me, it'll be the last thing you ever do. You get me, Kimosabi? Okay, now let's run through the other features of the gun. The magazine tube, which is a little bit different than the normal magazine tube. I'll talk about that more in just a moment, but the mag tube will hold 15 in the tube and one in the barrel, so 16 all together. And of course, this one, just like all most lever action 22s, will shoot shorts, longs, and long rifles. And this rifle has a flip up leaf sight that'll fold down and fold back up. And as you can see on there, you can adjust your elevation. You just have to unscrew and lift up and down on the middle part. The other unique thing about this 22 is that the trigger. Okay, now watch the trigger when I go to release the lever. Your trigger actually comes with the lever assembly. That's very unique. Most triggers stay here, but they say that having a trigger come with the lever as it goes down stops you from ever pinching your finger inside that little spot when you go to put the lever back up. Now ask me if I've ever done that before shooting a lever gun. No, I have never pinched my finger. With, with my Henry or any other, my Marlin, I've never pinched my finger in there while doing it. But you know, there you go. That's something unique about the Brownings is the trigger comes with the lever when you throw it. Let me touch on this again right quick right now. This lever throw only goes 33 degrees. That's as far as it opens up right there. What that ends up translating to is very, very quick follow-up shots. 
Now, you're gonna ask me, how do you do these follow-up shots? Okay, so this is, to me, this is will be the fastest way how to get the shots off. After you shoot, you're gonna, you're basically just opening your fingers up and closing back up. Now, I don't have to tell you how fast you can get with that little technique. I'm gonna have to test this out on the range when I get out there about that little throw right there. I have bought a hammer extension to go on the hammer itself. I really like the hammer extensions. They help out a lot. Something that they say about this particular gun is that they always have a somewhat heavier trigger on them. Now, it's not good to dry fire rim fire rifles, but I will for the video just once. We pull back, we already know we're clear. This particular trigger is not heavy at all. I'm gonna say that's right around four and a half. You know, my internal finger gauge is gonna say that's around four and a half pounds. And that's perfect for me. Now, if we take further look at this rifle, we have a serial number right underneath. It's very confusing looking up the serial number to this rifle. I will touch more on that in a moment. Usually this rifle has the Browning logo right here on the lever, but this one does not. And this is a grade one, there's two grades. Grade one, grade two. This is a grade one because the grade twos have a checkered palm right here and a checkered forearm guard right here. But this one, as you can see, is all smooth. The production of the Browning started in 1969 from what the sources tell me. There's some little disparity about serial numbers. So I'm not really sure about the serial number right here. And maybe you can tell me a little bit of information about this particular model that I have. I'm pretty sure this is a vintage model Browning BL-22. Somebody out there, please tell me in the comments what year this one was made. Now, let's take an up, up close look at the place at which this rifle is made. Browning Arms Company, Morgan, Utah, and Montreal. Made in Japan. Nani? So these rifles have been made in Moroku, Japan, since they started making them, from what I understand. I know we have our thoughts about foreign made, especially anything of Asian descent, but I can totally vouch for you guys right now that Moroku, Japan is doing a damn good job making these guns. And if you didn't know, Moroku, Japan is also where they make the current 94 Winchesters. And if you've put one in your hand, you understand right away that Moroku Japan is doing a damn good job. You're gonna ask yourself, why do I have this rifle? I have a Marlin 39A already. This is a Marlin Model 39A, 22. Holds 18 in the tube and one in the barrel. So that's 19 altogether. And this one sports the 24 inch barrel. So this is the longest boy that I have out of my lever actions. Holy sh! that's awesome. Go! That sucker just flew out. Okay, here we go. Ah! Ah! That's my gun. Actually, guys, you're gonna hate me, but I sold my Marlin 39A. Nani? I was actually having issues with it, and I didn't like that I was having issues with it, being that how much I paid for that gun. It's a very expensive gun. I was having jamming issues. It would not cycle several different types of ammo that I commonly use. Got a little jam. Ah, oh, hit it again. You got to take the ammo that's available to me. You know what I mean? Like that's a prerequisite to my firearms. You got to take the most common types of ammo. And it was having trouble doing them. Also, number two reason: the Marlin was a very long gun. It had a very, it had a 24-inch long barrel. Now that's great for velocity and sight radius and stuff like that, but that is not a very handy gun anymore. Very cumbersome walking through the woods with a 24 inch barrel gun. And the third reason why it was kind of bugging me is because how beautiful of a condition it was. Now this one's also in beautiful condition, but this rifle is still being made, okay? It's not like this is the last one of the crop or anything like that. The Marlin was the, was the last one. They're not making the Marlin 39s A's yet. And even if Ruger does start making them, they'll never be the JM stamped ones that I had. So what I ended up doing every time I brought it out was I was babying it. I was babying it way too much. I would, I would like, okay, I would look through a thing of brush when I was walking, be like, nope, that's too thick. I'm not going to go in there because I have fear I'm going to scratch the gun up. And I've just, I've become that way about older firearms now. Older firearms that are still in very good shape 
I don't want to bring them outside. Like, I don't want to go through the woods with them for sure because I'm fearing I'm going to destroy the beautiful elements that the gun still has. And I'm not one that puts gun in safe queens and forgets about it. Puts gun in safe queens. Hmm. Might want to say that again, big bubba. So I'm not no safe queen type of guy. Every gun that I have, it needs to have a use and it needs for me not to be scared to use it. Okay, in any situation that it's in. Being that this is a current production gun that's still being made, if I have any issues with it, I can simply send it back to the manufacturer, have them fix it, and send it back to me. That warranty is very important with the guns that I have today. Okay, another feature of this gun that I love so much is that if we look closely up here at the magazine tube, all we see is a button. Okay, now watch. If I push that button, the mag tube starts to slide out. There is no inserting it and twisting it into the little slot like there is on the Marlins and the Henrys. You simply push that button and the magazine tube comes right out. And then look, when you get done loading, which is gonna go right there, you simply push it back in and push in. So you don't ever have to line that notch up at all to make sure the magazine tube goes back in. Undo, push in. So I like that. That makes loading just a little bit faster. It's not a huge benefit, but I, I'd rather have it than not have it. Now, if we look at the front sight, we can see it's a black, just a tall black stand-up sight. Now, what I like about it is how thin it is. What I don't like about it is how black it is. Uh, that black kind of disappears on me. And what I'm probably gonna do is take a piece of white paint or nail polish and put right there on the end of it. Maybe even green, because green picks up really well to my eyes. Maybe some neon green. And since I bought this rifle used, I can only see one blemish on it, and it's right here. I don't know if you can even see it on the camera. Now, the only pet peeve that I have about this rifle is that it came with no sling swivels on it, but there's ways around that. Okay, there's little clamps that you can get for the barrel right here that you can clamp on and you'll be able to make a sling hook on right here. And there's also ways that you can put on a sling on the butt pad over here that so you can attach right here. Never ever will I drill into this rifle. Being that it has such a small receiver, you're going to think, well, no, no scope is ever going to fit on there. Well, it actually is designed for a scope and you're going to have to get some specific rings for it, but you can still mount a scope on here. You could also put a red dot on there. Now let's talk a little bit more about this lever throw. I haven't shot a lever gun in a long time that only has a short throw. If you remember back to my 256 video, my Marlin 256 that I had, it also had a short throw on it. The Marlin Model 62. It was also referred to as a levermatic because it has a short stroke lever. This will be the first short throw that I've messed with in a long time. Very slick. Now I do, I will admit, when the lever comes back, it does take a little effort for it to push back on the hammer right there. But it has a very slick action otherwise, and this gun will be my prized 22 gun from now on. All right guys, I just wanted to show off my new squirrel gun the Browning BL-22, and if you have any information about this rifle, please put in the comments. I would like to learn everything there is to know about this specific one. Okay, remember to go join me on Patreon. I have the links right there below, and if you like my leather gloves I have on and anything that you see that I've had in the past, just look in the description below. I have links for everything now, camera equipment, gloves, shirts, watches, etc. Go in there. If you like anything, please use my link to purchase it. Okay? Okay, make sure to like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Boom.